Hello everyone, um, here to do my top nine favorite Dragon Ball fan made um, stories. Uh, some of these of course are Dragon Ball fan made mangas, but either way, yeah. Unfortunately, warning, spoiler alert, I don't have Dragon Ball Absalom in my um, list. I know that some people like Absalom, but I didn't really care too much about it. And there's another fan-made story that's also on YouTube. I forget the name, but I forget what it's called. But it had some good scenes in it. But regardless, though, um, let's get started. Number nine on the list is Dragon Ball AF by Toro Taro. Um... This was actually one of the fan-made mangas that they did way back in the day, what that Toro Taro did. Um, basically, it's just... And most of these Dragon Ball fan-made mangas are, of course, take place after GT. Most of them, not all of them. But this is the story of when Goku, you know, leaves and the Z Fighters are... Um, are basically like without Goku, basically. And uh, they fight with this villain on the left, Zykor. Um, Zykor is a very, in kind of an interesting character because he's kind of like Goku Black almost. And this is before even Dragon Ball Super even came out. And he's basically Kaioshin Saiyan DNA, well, character, you know, but... He's just there, but he's still, like, one of the coolest uh, villains, Zykor is, and uh, that's why that it, you know, that Zykor is a pretty interesting character, even though his backstory is kind of weird. Also, another thing, too, is that the story doesn't make sense. Like, I understand that some Dragon Ball fan-made stories, some of, them, some of them don't make sense. But AF is one of them that just makes no sense at all. Like, they brought back, like, the OG Broly because of Zykor going... Ex I don't know. It, 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 that's why that it is my one of my least favorites, but it's still on the list. Like, it, but it does have... But Toro Taro does have pretty cool art styles in this manga. And that's why that it... In this list, that it is without a doubt a pretty okay story, but it's just not the best. And it's just basically an evil go another well, kind of an evil Goku ish story. And this is before even Goku Black was a thing back then. Yeah, but speaking of which, and, and because obviously he's Kaioshin, well, Zykor is a Kaioshin, but he's a Saiyan hybrid, but with Saiyan Kaioshin hybrid DNA, and that's pretty interesting. Also, the female Kaioshin that was killed by Boos magically somehow escapes, but for some weird reason. And also, just like Zamasu, she the the, the Kaioshin Lila doesn't like mortals. But what can you do? Number eight on the list is Dragon Ball EX's Apocalypto. Dragon Ball EX's Apocalypto, I mean, it was okay, but the story, I didn't really like it, but it's kind of interesting to see an evil Goku, but this type of evil Goku, um, some bean is taking over Goku's body, and like, and just like, well, like, like I said with Dragon Ball AF, this is before even Goku Black was even a thing back then. Because everybody wanted to see what an evil Goku... What, everybody wanted to see an evil Goku. Evil Goku. People also wanted to see Goku fight against an evil counterpart of Goku or something. And... I don't know. But... It just doesn't make sense, really, until we find out, like, who's the real being who took over Goku's body in this story. The actions were pretty good. It's just that some of the action, some of the drawings look almost like the GT animations. 
and stuff. The only scene I actually like was when Vegeta fought against evil Goku and Vegeta went Super Saiyan 5 and like beat the living shit out of evil Goku, which was pretty, pretty awesome, which I'm not going to lie. My, the only thing, even though I had some problems here and there with the story is that Vegeta wanted, he wanted the, 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 the being that's taken over Goku's body. He wanted to eat a fucking sensu bean so he can fight him out one last time. And lo and lo and behold, Piccolo told him not to, but Vegeta didn't listen. So the evil Goku eats the a sensu beam and goes to Super Saiyan 5. And also he... He and Goten try to think of a strategy, and um, the next thing you know, when Goku, el the evil Goku elbowed G Vegeta in the back, then he dropped his tail down and went back to his base form, which was really fucking stupid, and it was just a waste of time. And even when he, when, when Oob came around, it was just, I didn't really like it. I mean, yeah, it's like, the throat, you know, it's like teacher versus student, even though that the teacher is a being taking over his body. But here and there, Dragon Ball EX is apocalypto. It's okay, but it in terms of an evil Goku story, it's not the best evil Goku story. Let's just say that. Number seven is Dragon Ball After by Young Gigi. Also, I don't know who the fellow who did EX is Apocalypto. Oh, I forgot about that. But anyways, Dragon Ball After by Young Gigi. Um, this is basically another evil Goku story, but this is like when Goku gets hit in the head again and turns back into like what he was when he was when he was sent to earth and he calls himself well Kakarot this basically is just evil Goku but it's a different type of evil Goku like it's just turning back into like his old like kind of like what he was as a child like well as as an infant anyways um, I think it's, in terms of, like, it's better than EX's Apocalypto, but again, really, it had some problems, and it's also my least favorite of Young Gigi's Dragon Ball fan-made mangas. Yes, I liked in the fight scene of Goku versus Gohan, well, e Kakarot versus Gohan, and Kakarot versus Vegeta, and, Go and Vegeta somehow uses the Kaioken on his own and he used instant transmission and let me remind you this is before even when dragon ball super the manga version of the moral arc even existed so when when vegeta used the instant transmission with the yard rats well when the yard rats taught him to use it anyways pretty much this is an okay f story it's not completed i wish it was completed but it's not the best of Young Gigi stories. I would just have to say that. But it's better than EX's Apocalypto. Um, let's see here. Number six is... Wait. Number six is Dragon Ball A AF by Young Gigi or Dragon Ball After the Future by Young Gigi. Pretty much his AF story is much better than Toro Taro's. The art style is much better. <laughs> Although some people said that, well, Young Gigi's artwork back in the day wasn't better than, than Toro Taro's. Maybe in the beginning, yes, but his art style became much better as the years went by. Um... Anyways, the AF story 
is just basically about with you know a without Goku story after GT and it's basically um pretty some interesting things like for example in the beginning of the arc there's the ice arc which basically is him he's basically the son Frieza's son and um it's pretty interesting too my only issues here and there is that when young Gigi's um some of young Gigi's art style was was used by Toriyama's art like when Vegeta used the big bang attack against eyes that's the same position well not position but that's the kind of like the same art style that when Zarbon tried to use this energy blast against Vegeta during the Saiyan not um Namek arc but overall I do really love this story and it's the better version of AF that young Gigi did and it's one of my favorite young Gigi stories Unfortunately, this used to be on Amazon. The, the AF stories were on Amazon, but not anymore, which is a lot of BS, though, because, but it's copyright material, I guess, but overall, it's very rare to get these Dragon Ball fan made mangas nowadays <laughs> as well. Number five on the list is Dragon Ball Multiverse. This used to be my second favorite Dragon Ball fan-made manga. But nowadays, it's just out of control. Some of the story makes no sense. Some of it does, and some of it doesn't. It's just basically like a what-if scenario on a different timeline universe. Like, for example, Universe 13, there's... What if Goku wasn't hit in the head? Or in this case, you know, and he's Kakarot, basically. Like, what if Goku wasn't fall off the cliff and, and stuff? Um, what if Vegeta... Oh, I mean, not Vegeta. What if Vegeta... My mistake. What if Vegeta wasn't never defused? And let me remind you, this manga takes place even before even Dragon Ball Super, so... The Dragon Ball Super characters do not exist in Dragon Ball Multiverse. At least not do I know of. So if we can ignore the Dragon Ball Super Repcon thing. Like what if Vegito never defused? He would be the most powerful character in the multiverse. What if Boo absorbed Goku and Vegito? Well the universe would have been over. What if Cell killed Gohan? You know. And it's basically... You know, Dragon Ball Multiverse, here and there, it's out of control, but for its time, it was pretty good. And I still like it, it's just, it's not the best. Um, Number four, or, not number four, number five on the list is Bardock After. Now this, and by Young Gigi. Now, this is actually by... Yeah, this is actually by Young Gigi. Now, this is actually my favorite Bardock story. And, well, my favorite Dragon Ball fan-made Bardock story. And it's just my favorite Bardock story in general. And it's a kind of a what-if Bardock story in general. I do like it. It's like, imagine if Bardock was on planet Yardrad and... It, it, it's just basically an interesting story. And it's kind of like a Dragon Ball Super... Well, not Dragon Ball Super. It's basically... It's like... They kind of repcon Lord Child's character. Instead of Lord Child being the ancestor of Frieza... Lord Child's basically the younger brother of Frieza. Which I really like. Also, in this version, Bardock is... You know, is saved by a pro by a yard rat, and the yard rat trains Bardock to use the instant transmission and etc. Um, you should you guys should watch this. This um, it's by Mondo Cool. I think that's his name. He um, it's actually one of my favorite Young GG stories, and the the art style there looks pretty awesome too. And they also do like power level vid, well, a power level chart on how strong Bardock got. Um, 
when he um when the yard rats train him and stuff which is pretty interesting i am not gonna lie um i don't have any problems with it it's just that i wish that when he kill after he killed lord chilled i wish that he went after frieza though but he let go of frieza for some weird reason but it's whatever um Number four on the list is Dragon Ball R and R. Dragon Ball R and R is basically what if Raditz was good, and it's basically this is about Raditz and his daughter Ranch. Um, to believe it or not, this is actually one of my favorite stories. You can find it on Moscow X's uh, YouTube channel. He goes in a lot of detail into this Raditz story. Some people say that it's not the best Raditz story, but it's one of my favorite Raditz stories. I also like the the fan animation story that he did, which is also on, on Moscow X's channel. Um, ow, my legs. Basically, it's just the story of Raditz and Ranch. Um, and it's pretty interesting, too, that, like, what if Raditz never turned good, or what if Raditz survived the special bean cannon, you know? It's a really interesting story, and I highly recommend, um, watching Moscow X's YouTube channel. Number two is Dragon Ball VS, or DBVS. Specifically, the the Goku Black versus GT Goku story. I love this story because it's like, imagine if Goku Black was in the GT timeline and fought against Goku in Dragon Ball GT. That is a very interesting story. Very awesome drawings of, of young Gigi as always. And by far, it is one of the best, if not the best, Young Gigi stories or drawings. You know, I also like how even though it was kind of a fan service thing that Young Gigi did, but Goku transforming into like a Super Saiyan 4 like transformation with God Key, that's pretty damn dope. My only issue with this story is that I wish that Goku Black killed, like, for some reason, Goku Black spared GT Go Goku, and he didn't get a chance to kill him. That makes no sense, but it's whatever, but it's still a really good story. You know, really good story. Like, if you like Super versus GT... This this is the story for you guys. And number one, and still is my number one favorite, is Dragon Ball New Age by Mar by Malik Studios, aka Malik Torihane. This is by far my favorite Dragon Ball fan made manga ever. Um, I still love it to this very day. It's like imagine if, you know. It's Dragon Ball GT, but it follows the original Dragon Ball manga and follows the Battle of Gods film. Ignoring Dragon Ball Super altogether, ignoring Dragon Ball, um, well, the Resurrection of F film and the Broly film. This story is canon only to the original manga and the original, um, well, Battle of Gods film. And not the GT film. I mean GT um, series. Malik Torihane basically did some, did some things very different with Dragon Ball New Age. It's been redone three times of Dragon Ball New Age. But the new version still like is awesome. And it's better than like the older ones. Um... Like, for example, Goku's outfit looks like the N of Z outfit, which you guys can see 
Um, Rigger's much more of a better character, um, which is this guy with Sapari. Um, it's Vegeta's brother. And instead of like the whole stereotype Dragon Ball villain being cocky and say, oh, I want to take over the universe, Rigger's a sympathetic character more than his his other counterparts. Instead of him, like like I said, instead of him like acting like, well, a jackass, like most villains, he's sympathetic. He wants to kill Vegeta because what he did to his mother. Now, even in the older ones, Vegeta did that too, but 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 Rigger wasn't smiling or anything. Rigger was all business. Rigger wanted to go out there and kill Vegeta. Um, also, the fight scenes are a lot different than the older ones of Dragon Ball New Age. Um, the De Definitive Edition looks much different like instead of like his base form Rigger uses his true Super Saiyan to fight against Vegeta as a Super Saiyan 4 and then he uses Super Saiyan 4 which he calls it assault form and then his Super Saiyan 5 you know he calls it Asura form which is pretty damn dope um to be honest Dragon Ball New Age, even though it's been rewritten over and over again, it's still my favorite Dragon Ball fan made manga. Also, I can't be I also can't wait for the Elijah saga because Elijah is one of my favorite Dragon Ball fan made villains. Um, but again, we will have to see. And basically, the art style is very beautiful. You know what he did and stuff. So, pretty much, Dragon Ball New Age, it will always be my number one favorite. No matter if Malik redoes it over and over and over again, it will always be my number one favorite. That's what I only have. And you can always watch it on Derek Padula's um, website, which is right here. So, yeah. Oh. And that's pretty much it.